Hey guys, in this session we're going to be covering kinematics. Now brace yourself, there's a lot to cover in this session. I guess the first thing you got to um, know with kinematics is these four letters here that you will commonly see uh, with kinematics. Uh, the first one is S. Now S is, in other words, it's just distance or displacement. Uh, v is for velocity, uh, also known as speed. A is acceleration, and T is time. So this is the four things that you'll predominantly be dealing with in kinematics. So let's just have a look at how all of these four things are actually related to each other. So first off, S. Now S is just um, some function of T, which is time. So when you actually differentiate differentiate s you end up with velocity so velocity is just uh, differentiation of s now if you think about it velocity in other words is change in uh, change in distance over change in time so that's what velocity is but there's also another word we can write it as as s dash now when you differentiate uh, velocity, you actually end up with acceleration. So in other words, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Now this could be written as V dash. But A, acceleration is also, if you think about it, uh, S, that's the function of, um, well, let's try that again. You can also differentiate S twice to get to acceleration. So you can also write it like this in sometimes you'd write it as d squared s over dt squared so this is the link between distance velocity and acceleration so or, or s double dash now when we have a we know that is if it's some function of t or it could be just a constant it could be either if that's the case if we integrate, if we integrate a, then we would get velocity. So velocity equals integral of a with respect to dt. And when you integrate velocity, you actually end up with the distance formula, which is just integral of v dt. So that's basically the connections here, guys, because, I mean, you've got uh, velocity, acceleration, and distance. They're all connected in one way. So if you differentiate distance, you get velocity. Differentiate velocity, you get acceleration. So if you want to go backwards, integrate acceleration to get velocity, and then integrate velocity to get distance. All right. Now, just with kinematics, there are a few pointers that's worth taking, and I've kind of put this in the next four slides, these four little important points. Um, and they will help you solving kinematic problems. Okay, so let's get going. So here are the pointers now. The first one is when t equals to 0, s, we write it as s of 0, is what we call initial displacement. I'm just going to write this down first, hold on. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is that when t equals to 0, s of 0 is what we call initial displacement, or sometimes it's also set as origin if it's 0. Uh, in terms of the velocity function, it is the initial velocity. And for the acceleration function, it's the initial acceleration. So whenever you see, you know, something, sometimes they'll put like, um, it has an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. That basically means when t is equal to 0, uh, v is equal to 10. Or you can also say, initially it had an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. That means when t equals 0, a of 0 is equal to 2. That's what the translation means. Okay. On to the next set of points, guys. The first one is, when s is equal to 0, we say that the object is at origin. When uh, the velocity is equal to 0, we can have two situations, well three really, object is at rest 
or it's at maximum or minimum distance from origin. And then finally, when a equals zero, object is not accelerating, um, or in other words, the velocity is just constant. So the velocity is actually not increasing. Okay, we got two more sets of points coming up, guys. So brace yourselves. The next one is looking at integral of velocity function between t1 and t2. Basically what this does is it gives the distance traveled between t1 and t2 seconds. You know, sometimes you get a question like, um, how far has this object moved in the fourth second? That means you're looking, t1 would be 3 and t2 would be 4, and you're basically looking at how far the object has moved between the third second and the fourth second. And so for that, you'd actually use this. And your last set of pointers, guys. I'm sorry there's so much to learn in this one, but that's kinematics for you. So the first one is when s is less than zero, we say that the object is below or to the left of the origin. When s is greater than zero, the object is above or to the right of the origin. So this is just with the distance. Now you got to look at what the velocity less than zero and greater than zero means. So if the velocity is less than zero, the object is traveling backwards. And if velocity is greater than zero, the object is traveling, well, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? It's forwards. And I guess now we have to look at the acceleration, what happens when it's greater than zero and lower than zero. So if acceleration is less than zero, the object is slowing down. And if acceleration is greater than zero, the object is speeding up. Now, sometimes you might have heard of, um, um, I guess th there's a couple of other words that you can use for this. If um, acceleration is when A is greater than zero, and deceleration is when A is less than zero. Okay, guys, I know it's been a lot of information in the last seven minutes, but uh, bear with me. I want to go through one example, um, and hopefully you guys can go away and do some problems on your own from this. So here's an example. The velocity of an object after t seconds, after it started from the origin, is given by the function v of t equals 3t squared minus 60 minus 24. So what I've done is I've, I've separated the questions, so I can do one question in each slide. So the first one is a nice and simple one here. Write the formula for the distance and acceleration. So we know that if we want to find the distance, we need to integrate the velocity function. And if we want to find acceleration, we differentiate the velocity function. So it's basically we're looking for after t seconds. So when we do distance is integral of velocity, the velocity function. So we have integral of 3t squared minus 60 minus 24 dt. So integrating this, we would get s is equal to 3t cubed over 3 minus 60 squared over 2 minus 24t plus c which just simplifies to t cubed minus 3t squared minus 24t plus c. Now, we've got to figure out what this c is. And we know that it started from the origin. That means if t is equal to 0, s is also equal to 0, because it says it started from the origin. So, substituting it back, we know that c is equal to 0 because, you know, substituting t into the distance formula, we get everything as 0. Therefore, c is equal to 0. So our formula for distance is going to be t cubed minus 3t squared minus 24t. Well, we don't need the plus c because c is equal to 0. Now, the acceleration. We know that the velocity is equal to 3t squared minus 60 minus 2. Minus, sorry, minus 24. So differentiating this, we get 60 minus 6. 
Therefore, acceleration, which is change in velocity over change in time, equals 60 minus 6. Okay, we've got a few more questions to go, guys. I, I really do apologize for the long video, but like I said before, I want to get this done in one, one shot. So still with the same question, but this time I want to work out initial velocity and acceleration. So I already know what the velocity function is, which is 3t squared minus 60 minus 24. So to find the initial velocity, I need to put v of 0, which would give me 3 times 0 minus 6 times 0 minus 24, which gives me negative 24 meters per second. And as for the initial acceleration, I know that acceleration is 60 minus 6. So a of 0 would equal 6 times 0 minus 6, which is minus 6 meters per second squared. So that's just another variety of question. I've got a couple of more. So the next question is, when is the object at rest? So at rest, we know that the velocity equals 0. So we substitute, well, we have our formula, which is v is 3t squared minus 60 minus 24. And we have 0 equals that formula. So taking out 3 as a common factor, we'd have t squared minus 2t minus 8. And of course, 3 disappears because 0 divided by 3 is 0. So 0 is equal to t squared minus 2t minus 8. Now obviously, we see a quadratic, so we can factorize this to t minus 4 and t plus 2, which means t is equal to positive 4 or negative 2. Now, in this particular case, because it actually, the question said that the object started from the origin, um, we kind of have to assume that t is greater than, greater than 0. So we're going to go with the answer of 4 is when it comes to rest. So here's the next question. When is the object traveling at minimum speed? Now, velocity is max or minimum when acceleration is equal to zero. So we know that the formula for acceleration is 60 minus 6. So if we substitute zero equals 60 minus 6, we actually end up with t is equal to 1. So what this means is that um, when time is equal, well, after one second, the velocity is at its minimum speed. That's what it means. Okay, guys, one more question. So this one, I want to look at what distance did the object travel in the fourth second. Okay, having a look at this, we know that the fourth second means it's between the third second, or t is equal to 3, and t is equal to 4. So we want to figure out the distance that it traveled between, well, for this function, which is the velocity function, but between t equals 3 and t equals 4. So, integrating this function, we're going to end up with t cubed minus... Whoa, 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 sorry about that. Sorry, guys, press the wrong button there. Just skipped a couple of slides. We have t cubed minus 3t squared minus 24t, and that's between 4 and 3. So, substituting these values, this is just our basic... Um, kind of dealing with integrals, definite integrals. Pretty much the same thing as you did before. So substituting 4 in the equation and 3 in the equation. So this simplifies to negative 8t minus minus 72. So you get an answer of negative 8. So this basically means the object is left or below the origin by 8 meters. Okay, I know I said this was the last question, guys. I promise you the next one is the last one, all right? I do apologize for the long video. So this is the last question. As I said, I promise. When did the object return to the origin is the last question we're looking at. Okay, so for this one, we want to know at what time s is equal to 0. So we know that s is t cubed minus 3t squared minus 24t. So we've got 0 equals t cubed minus 3t squared minus 24t. We know we can take t as a common factor out, so we'll have t squared minus 3t minus 24. 
So t is equal to 0, or we need to solve the quadratic. Solving the quadratic, we know that t squared minus 3t minus 24 could be written as t is equal to I'm going to use the quadratic formula because I know that there's no two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add up to negative 3. So just doing this part real quickly, I mean, or you could always just do it in the calculator. Sorry about that, guys. When you do this um, in the calculator, you know, you don't need to use the quadratic formula like I've done here, but it's just showing the long method here. You actually have two answers, 6.623 or negative 3.623. So... We know that t has to be bigger than 0, as we remember when it said object is um, started from the origin. And since in this case, object is returning to the origin, the answer has to be 6.623. It can't be negative 3.623 because, well, you know, the object started from the origin. So just ignore it for now, and we're going to ignore t is equal to 0 as well. We're going to ignore that is because, well, we know that it actually started from the origin. All right, guys. Um, like I said before, I'm terribly sorry for the really long video here, but that one example did take a long time, a lot of things to cover. Um, but anyway, just have a go with some of those problems that I've um, mentioned before. And, yeah, good luck with it. But once again, apologies for the long video, and thanks for watching.